Elisha, he knew, like, man, I can't go forward. I need the wisdom from God. I need the strategy from the Lord, and I need to wait upon the Lord. I have to make sure my heart's right. I have to make sure that I'm not walking in unforgiveness or unbelief. You know, and so when you're daily before the Lord, the Holy Spirit is so wonderful, and he shows us. And then Elijah took 12 stones in verse 31, according to the numbers of the tribes of the sons of Jacob. And the word of the Lord came saying, Israel shall be your name. And with the stones, he built an altar in the name and self-revelation of the Lord. He made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order. And he cut the bulls and did all that stuff. And he filled uh, four jar jars with water and poured it on the burnt offering. And the water in the word always represents, I mean, the word, water in the Bible represents the word. So we have got to meditate on the word. We cannot go any further without meditating on the word. We have got to meditate on the word. And we will teach a course here, uh, and we said we were going to start in September, but we will do one, and just even teaching you how to study the Bible. And nowadays, it's even easy with everything online. And so the Lord is asking us, do you want to come up higher, yeah. right? Do you want to see the breakthrough in your life? Do you want to see more and more? He said, we will do greater works. We're in this season. We're in this season that when you see that person that's, that's you know, you know, just drug addicted or, 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 you know, you know, just whatever it is that, that man, that you just have that, you know, God is saying, I want a greater levels of it, my authority that you lay hands on them instantly oh. delivered. I was instantly delivered from drugs. Oh. Why not now? Yeah. Right? So God is a miracle working yeah. God and he turns the hearts back to him. That's what he wants. It's not like, oh, God, look at that person. Oh, my God, I can't believe that kind of bird. You know, blah, blah, blah. they're doing this kind of sin, that kind of sin. Well, that was some of us. So that's why we all have to watch our hearts and how we judge people. But the thing is, do we have compassion? Jesus moved with compassion, and that's when the people were healed. So, but the thing is, we have to check our hearts. Are you, do you have a hardened heart? Remember, the disciples were with Jesus for three years, and he said, he goes, you know what, you guys, you, you still don't believe because your heart is evil because it's hard. They hung out with Jesus for three years. So it's possible you can go to church 15 times a week that you have a hard heart. So during this time, it's like, Lord, show me my heart. Because what happens is when you go through circumstances in, in life, you know, life, situations happen. So you get a little disillusioned. And you get disappointed, right? How many of you have been disappointed in your walk with the Lord? Like, why is this happening? Like, why? So God's not the problem. But I can promise you he has a way out. And he has a solution. So the enemy wants you to pull back and become passive and complacent. And the Lord say, no, no, let my fire burn on you. You know, Leviticus 6 in chapter 9, it also says that the fire has to be kept burning on the altar always, eternally. That's the altar of our heart, not going through the motions, coming to church and just, you know, doing your little check-in and your time clock thing. No, it's about, Lord, what do you have for me? He has a purpose and a plan. He has destiny for all of us. And it's not just to come to church and sit in the pew and you did your thing on Sunday. He had, we all have the opportunity of, the, of operating that breaker anointing. God, and let me tell you something. The enemy wants to put you to sleep. And, and, and we need the spirit of Elijah to wake people up out of their slumber. We need to wake up and, and see and, be, and walk in the discernment of the Lord and recognize. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. The enemy wants to lull you to sleep and let you even think of your family members. This is a lot of baloney. But I'm going to tell you something. When you have prayed over someone who was dead and he came back to life, then you start believing that God's a miracle working God. Martin was healed of cancer, level four cancer. Then you start believing. You're not going to be straddling the fence. It's either you're hot or cold. In Revelation 3, 19, 22, in the Amplified, it says, Those whom I dearly and tenderly love, I rebuke and discipline, showing them their faults and instructing them. He didn't say criticize. He didn't say condemn. He's showing us our heart to say, hey, wake up. Where are you at? You know, we have a critical eye. And we've gotten along and we've aligned with the world, especially with uh, the government, and, and cursing them and calling them names and this and that and saying they're this and that. It's not good. 
It's hindering you. Let me just say this. It's hindering your walk. We don't have a right. I, it hinders my walk. So it says here, so be enthusiastic and repent. Listen, change your inner self. He didn't say, ask me to change it. He says, change your inner self, your old way of thinking, your sin, sinful behavior. Seek God's will. Sin means hitting, missing the mark. Behold, I stand at the door of the church and continually knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and restore him and he with me. He who overcomes the world through believing that Jesus is the son of God, I will grant to him the privilege to sit beside me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down beside my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying to the churches. And this is the word of the Lord. This is what the spirit of God is saying to us. In the um, passion, it says, listen, I know what you do. I know that you're neither frozen in apathy nor fervent with passion. How I wish you were either hot one or the other. But because you are neither cold nor hot, he says here, but lukewarm, I'm about to spit you from my mouth. For you claim I'm rich and getting richer. I don't need a thing. Yet you are clueless that you're miserable, poor, blind, barren, and naked. This is God speaking. So I counsel you to purchase gold perfected by fire so that you can be truly rich. Purchase a white garment to cover and clothe your shameful Adam nakedness. Pur purchase eye salve to be placed over your eyes so that you can truly see. And that's been my heart. I said, Lord, open up my eyes. I will put that eye salve on because I'm not going to act as though I'm better than anybody else that I walk because I haven't walked on water yet. Show me where I'm at. Lord, I just want, I want to hear. I've been, you know, really pressing in and praying in the spirit and, and just enjoying. It's been fabulous. In the beginning, it's, you know, you're, you're, it's like you're getting, like, you know, getting started. You're trying. And so read a chapter a day. Pray in the spirit. Listen to worship music. But make sure you set like a calendar date. Like when I started doing this, I got like a day timer at the time, you know, and, and I set a time. It was a half hour. Well, I really started out with five minutes a day, and then I went to 15, and then I went to a half hour. Just be realistic. Wherever you're at, just start. But we can't. I mean, you can if you want, and, and just be busy, 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 and just go about your day and just do your whole thing and not talk with him. Or, or, or you can, you can, you can make a way, you know, and, 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 you know, it's, it's a privilege for us to hear the King of Kings and hear what the Lord has to say. And, uh, so the Lord is, is giving us, he's challenging us. He's asking us, will you come? Will you allow me to build you up? Will you allow me to take the things that you've been trying to get in order? Will you allow my spirit to develop you? So what happened was he put the things in order, he filled the jars with water, and he poured it on the burnt offering. And then he said in verse 34, do it a second time. And they did it a second time. Then he said, do it a third time. And they did it the third time. The water ran around the altar, and he filled the trench with water. And at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, Elisha the prophet came near and said, O oh Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel. And, and that I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. Verse 37, hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that you alone are God, and have turned their backs back to you. Then the fire of the Lord fell, and consumed the burnt offering, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. I love that. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And Elisha said, Seize the prophets of Baal, and let not one of them escape. And then, so let me just pause here. This is what God is saying to us. Come back to me. Allow my fire, allow the spirit of the Lord rise up in us in ways that we have not experienced before. Because we're going from faith to faith and glory to glory. This is what God's asking us to do. And he's saying, we can't straddle the fence any longer. 